Oh, I love that. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code it resolves 10 YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome to part two of the Hollowed Haunting Challenge week. I hope you guys are doing exceptionally well. Today is going to be a good one because this is the exact deck, or very similar at least, to the deck that I was asking for last week, uh, and we did get it. This deck is by Ender Seas, uh, I believe a brand new uh, newcomer to the Challenge Week, so thank you so much for being a part of this. I, I'm really excited to try this deck. I have tested it just a little bit, just to get a good feel for it, and I'm really liking it. So before we jump into that we do have to announce the next card for the challenge week next week which is splendid reclamation this is going to be an interesting one this is a bit of a challenge because it is a sorcery for four mana return all land cards from the graveyard to the battlefield tapped may not seem like a super crazy effect but i'm willing to bet we can do some really cool stuff with it so i encourage you guys try this out be creative again i think we can have a lot of fun uh and i super super can't wait to see what you guys come up with i think this card is really fun uh anyway let's talk about ender Sea's deck uh this is selesnia enchantments it's actually a more straightforward list uh than most so in terms of creativity it is exactly what i was asking for uh and it is actually very good but it's actually very similar to just the list that you would, I think, see anyway, uh, that just happened to run Hollowed Haunting. So uh, the idea is obviously to capitalize very heavily on enchantments. Uh, to do that, we have a number of things. Sanctum Weaver can tap for some mana. We've got Sithis as well as Enchantress's presence. These are gonna help us draw some cards uh, and hopefully push ourselves further into the deck. We do have some removal with Seal Away and Banishing Light and Calyx actually. Uh, but Calyx is also a way to, to kind of get further into the deck as well. Uh, Katilda, the new Katilda, is in here just as a really good beater. It's flying lifelink pro vampires. You can disturb it out later onto one of the tokens if you need to, but essentially it's just a really strong lifelink flyer uh, due to having so many permanents on the field. Uh, excuse me, borrowed time is also in the removal package. Uh, Sterling Grove is in here. This is going to protect all of our enchantments, give them shroud. It makes it really hard for the opponent to deal with anything. It also does allow us to kind of pull something out as we need it. So if we know we need a particular card we can find it um at the very top end we have got two of these overwhelming splendors i think this is such a funny card to add in here uh but i do really like the addition ender seas so thank you so much enchant player that player uh the creatures that player controls lose all abilities and have base power toughness one one uh, enchanted player can't activate uh, abilities that aren't mana abilities or loyalty abilities so they can still use planeswalkers but this shuts down a lot of the creatures that we would expect to see which is really really good uh one interesting tech piece here reliquary tower we do hope to draw quite a bit of cards here obviously uh and so reliquary tower can help us just keep the cards in our hand we're not having to discard them so let's see how it goes we're gonna send this through three games ender seas i wish you the best of luck we did start off strong uh we do have three wins so you gotta match three wins to actually get uh in the running here hopefully we can do it i do really like this deck so let's give this one a shot and here we are guys this is game number one uh and i actually am pretty okay with this hand we're gonna keep this uh and see how it goes we'll lead on the white source i think um and honestly we're gonna hold off on playing this pathway land for as long as we can okay well that actually makes it quite a bit easier because now we can kind of go in either direction i think what i'm gonna do this time is do this uh just to guarantee we've got both colors of mana now the reliquary tower obviously something we want to get down but we're not necessarily needing it right this second so i think we can kind of give it a minute uh and see how it goes um this is an interesting card i kind of expect to see some things like this in uh hmm, in uh next week's uh challenge so i'm very curious to see what you guys come up with there um Let's do this, and I'm just going to throw Katilda out. It's not great, I know, but it is the mana efficient play. Next turn, we can seal away plus Sterling Grove if we'd like, uh, since we've got that fourth land guaranteed. We've also got the two white sources, so that's not a problem. We're very heavy on the seal aways here, uh, which I'm actually kind of okay with. Um, I think this is definitely going to be an interesting list. 
Uh, so I'm very curious to see how this one goes. It looks like this is Abzan. Uh, obviously not gonna block, just gonna let that hit. That's very, very good. Okay, this is such a, uh, a really, really important card to, the, to this deck. Um, so, how do we want to do this? I think the safe play uh, is Sterling Grove first. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and seal away on the Mire Triton. Uh, that just gets it off the field. It's a Death Toucher we now don't have to worry about, and we get in for a, a hit of three, whereas pre uh, prior to playing that seal away, we on only would have hit for two. So I feel like that that's probably worth it. They're again probably going to be able to kill this. Yeah, looks like they are. Uh, but that's actually kind of okay because we do have solutions for that. You know what I mean? Like, it's not the end of the world. Um... I'm gonna go ahead and play the Enchantress's Presence. We're not under a ton of pressure at the moment, uh, and so I'd rather go ahead and get the card draw engine going. We are lacking lands, so I kinda wanna push that forward. Uh, now the Sanctum Weaver is a very crucial piece to this puzzle. It taps for a lot of mana, but I wanna be able to draw a card off of it with that Enchantress's Presence if we can. Uh, and it looks like they're probably going to hit the Sterling Grove, in which case we just get to do this and go get another Sterling Grove. Um, so that's kind of fine. <laughs> uh, that's not the end of the world. Now worth noting, we do need to draw cards to get a second green source to be able to play it right away, but... Or I guess we can just play it and then hope to get something for the Sanctum Weaver. We'll see. Uh, sure. Um, we should be able to manage this okay. Uh, we will see. Let's go ahead and drop this down. We can still play the Seal Away. I'm gonna do this first though, because I think it's the safer of the two. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and seal away, getting rid of that Chupacabra. Uh, now again, still not drawing lands. I want, I actually did not look at the land count of this deck. Uh, Ender Seas, I'm very curious to see what it is. We'll, uh, we'll maybe take a peek at that in between, but, uh, Calyx is a, a very good draw in my opinion, because, uh, we can get rid of this Millipede. Oh, Reanimator, I'm assuming. Uh, we still don't have a Hollow Taunting, which is kind of funny. Um... All right, we need to get some mana out here uh, for sure. Now, is it worth it? I think so. Let's go ahead and do this. We do draw a card. Again, no land. Uh, very precarious situation we have found ourselves in. Okay, I mean, there's a land. It's a Blossoming Sands, but it's a land. I'm gonna go ahead and get that uh, Mire Triton out. Again, just having the Death Toucher is a little scary. And now this has Shroud, so this is gonna hopefully stick around. And as long as it sticks around for a turn and they don't reanimate that Massacre Worm, we might be okay. A um, little worried about that, uh, but it is what it is. We have to do the best we can, and I think that that's probably gonna be okay. Uh, yes, perfect. All right, well now, now we can do some work. Um, all right, first things first, actually. Let's seal away. Uh, we, I guess we could have waited to try and get an untapped source here. We're gonna try and maximize the Sanctum Weaver as best we can. That's so good. Okay, let's get this out of here. Uh, this is a very good draw. Okay, so we can tap this for white, which, yeah, we obviously are just gonna do gonna draw us another card we now have three leftover white uh if we get another sterling grove we are in amazing shape um i'm gonna go ahead and take the route of oh no i'm sorry we can't target this my mistake 100 percent uh but i think what we can do let's do this we're gonna draw another card here this is also gonna give us some creatures which is perfect uh or at least a creature uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that Skyclave Apparition out of there. We get a nothing nothing, um, <laughs> uh, which is fine. And then I think we go ahead and play the Katilda here. Uh, this is just a really strong threat. So even if they happen to get the Massacre Worm out and kill the other two things, this is just a really strong threat that they're gonna have to deal with. They also didn't play any kind of major stuff last time. Okay, yeah, you got it. Great card. Uh, the good thing about Katilda, though, is it just comes back. Um, so, not terribly worried about that. Um, let's... Let's Enchantress's Presence, I suppose. Um, that's gonna draw us some more cards, which I think is definitely worth it. Let's go ahead and throw this out there. Um, and I think... I mean, I guess we just pass. 
nothing else we really can do, so we'll just pass. We've got all the removal we could ever need here, as well as, you know, with the Calyx, that's just really, really good. So, I guess at some point we do kind of want to get that Calyx going, so maybe that's our goal next turn. Uh, we can also just throw this onto something, which is quite good. Let's just see if this works. It doesn't have shrouds, so they can definitely just kill this, but regardless, we're going to get some stuff in return. There's two more Sanctum Weavers. That's very good. Um, might as well throw another Sanctum Weaver out, I guess, just to just to do the thing. <laughs> Uh, and there we go. You're seeing this deck do exactly what we're wanting it to do. So this is fantastic. Uh, let's get an attack for 17 in. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's ridiculously good. Okay. Uh, we also do gain 17 life. Uh, so we're back up to 27. <laughs> that seems pretty good. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Uh, now, they can just kill this thing if they'd like. Uh, and I'm sure they've got sweepers and plenty of ways to deal with it. But yeah, there we go. Uh, and that's actually kind of okay. Again, we get to rebuild so quickly that it kind of doesn't matter. Um, I mean, it does, but it's not really the end of the world. Uh, let's go ahead and throw Calyx out here. Uh, I will go ahead and plus. Oh, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Okay. Uh, yep, we're just going to go ahead and throw this out there. This is going to activate basically everything again uh, and do a lot. Now, something to keep in mind here, we do have to be very careful of our own deck. We can lose just by decking, uh, and so we do have to be a bit careful there, but hopefully next turn we can actually just finish them off here. All we need is a couple points of damage and we're kind of good to go. So we can just play Katilda maybe and, and get the win. Um, seems very likely, or um, yeah, looks like that's going to be a possibility. So let's do this. Let's see if this actually lands. Um, perfect. There's a Sithis as well if we wanted to go that route. Um, and there we go. We got the win. All right. Ender sees a strong start for us that time. Let's see if we can get another win in game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And this is a bit of a rough hand. We don't have green mana. Uh, we do have the seal away, which is helpful. And we do have some things we can play later. <sighs> I'm going to try it. I don't love this hand, I'll be honest. I did check the land count in between, by the way. We are at 23, so it's actually not too bad. Uh, but we definitely are going to need to draw something here. This is probably not a good keep, I'll be honest, but I do want to give it a shot here. Uh, I hate going down on cards if we don't have to. Uh, now this might be a situation where we should, <laughs> but it's okay. We'll see what we can do. Okay, uh, well, that really worked out pretty well then, because uh, that gives us our green source. Now, it is a tapped land, but we really don't have anything aside from the Sterling Grove that we'd want to play anyway, uh, and so that is perfectly fine. Um, I think the play is just going to be to get rid of this. Uh, the alternative would be to try and play that Sanctum Weaver out. It looks like this might be the infinite combo list. I'm going to go ahead and play the Sanctum Weaver here. We kind of need the mana to be able to deal with multiple things in the next couple turns, so I think that it's worth it to give this a shot. Uh, this is a very, very solid deck, by the way. This is scary. Very scary. Uh, and so we are going to do the best we can to try and deal with everything. Um, all right. There's a land. Um, let's do this. We can seal away and then borrowed time. So what we can seal away is the incubation druid, obviously. Uh, and then we can borrow time on the ley line, which I think is definitely the right call. That ley line is terrifying. So <laughs> we need to get that out of there. Uh, now the hope is just that they can't deal with anything. And in particular, the Sanctum Weaver, because again, we can just start replaying a bunch of that stuff uh, if need be. We've got plenty of borrowed times. We do want to get the Enchantress's Presence down next turn, uh, so we can start drawing some cards as well. And we're going to want to deal with that Cavalier of Thorns uh, immediately. That is a strong and very scary card. There's a Sithis as well. Uh, well, that's actually better, so let's do this. Um, in my opinion, that's better. All right. Uh, we can... Go ahead and Sterling Grove, actually, just to give everything Shroud and protect everything up here. 
There's a seal away as well. That's actually very good. Um, I wish we could generate just a little bit more mana, but we just can't. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and play the Borrowed Time. We're going to gain us a life, draw us a card. Uh, we'll get this out of there. Uh, now we can play the seal away, which is very helpful. Uh, and the question is, do we want to... I think we just get rid of the the Bonders Prodigy. That card is very scary, so I'd like to go ahead and get rid of that before they can activate it. Um, okay. So they can kill just the Sterling Grove and a land, I guess? Uh, which is terrifying, but we actually have ways we can deal with this in our deck. Uh, we've got Borrowed Times, we've got stuff like that, so maybe, maybe, <laughs> uh, we can make something happen. Oh! Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, does this work? <laughs> if this... <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh my gosh, that makes me really happy. <laughs> I'm gonna attack in. Block with your Ulamog, please. <laughs> yeah, that's a less scary Ulamog now. Oh my gosh, that makes me so... F oh, that's so funny. That's hilarious to me. Okay, um... The only trick is, uh, we didn't draw anything there. <laughs> Um, I am gonna attack in. We're not planning to block with with uh, the Sithis, obviously, so it is what it is. Okay, that's scary, but it can't activate. It can't activate. That <laughs> we basically just neutered their entire deck. Uh, so that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I mean, they do have a four four. To be clear, the Incubation Druid does still uh, have three counters on it, which is scary. Um, but again, it's kind of just a matter of time. We're drawing quite a bit of land now, which is a bit odd. Uh, so hopefully we don't draw land this time, and we didn't. So that's really good. Uh, there's another Enchantress's Presence. We'll go ahead and play that. Uh, might as well. We now draw three cards. Uh, we don't have a Reliquary Tower, actually, which is kind of funny. Uh, let's play you. This is amazing. Uh, there's the Sterling Grove, which we will need. Uh, you know, honestly, the safe bet is to get the Ulamog off the field, I think. Um, oh, and we can actually play Sterling Grove. All right, let's go ahead and get that down. We're going to draw a bunch. Uh, yeah, and I'm just going to play Katilda out. Um, now, we could Banishing Light again, I guess. It's a little scary too, but I think we can do it. Uh, I, I just don't want to draw too many cards, if that makes sense. Like, at some point, that's a bad idea. Um, there's the Reliquary Tower, which would have been very helpful. All right, let's go ahead and get that out of there. Uh, I'll attack in for one. They can block if they want. It doesn't really matter. Uh, all right, so we have to discard seven cards. Uh, one, two, three, uh, four five so many so many things i'm just picking kind of seven that i think will be okay um the sithis obviously isn't useful when we've already got one on the field that's a completely dead card uh the key here is now we just have to get one more permanent on the field <laughs> uh so there's a hollowed haunting this is great this is so good <laughs> Now again, we can lose at some point, so we gotta be kinda careful, but uh, I think I think we done did it. We did the thing. Dude, that was sick. All right, you have two wins, Ender Seas. Guys, the new people are coming out strong. Let's see if we can get one more win. If we can do it, you are tied for the lead. All right, guys, it is our third and final game. Let's see, Ender Seas, if you can get another win, uh, you are tied for the lead, my friend. That's amazing. Uh, this is a pretty easy easy keep, in my opinion. We've got the Sanctum Weaver on turn two with the Blossoming Sands turn one, uh, Enchantress's Presence, and actually a turn three Hollowed Haunting if we can uh, keep that Sanctum Weaver around. So this is a pretty easy keep. We'll see if it works. Uh, also, guys, just out of curiosity, is anybody else having certain... Not, it's like... 
it, for whatever reason, the game seems to be running quite slowly and like the server keeps kind of loading up a lot. Uh, and I'm not sure if anybody else seems to be having that issue lately. It's It's been fairly persistent over the last couple days, so I'm just curious to know what everybody else's thoughts are there. Uh, let's get this down. I'm gonna go ahead and play the, the Hollowed Haunting. Let's get it down now. This attacks on a very different angle, so even if they happen to sweep, we can go ahead and push more damage through the board. So they could get rid of the Sanctum Weaver now uh, if they felt the need, and it's kind of okay. Not great, but it's okay. Uh, and we'll see what we can do. I think we'd like to get the Enchantress's presence down. Uh, truthfully, I think that's probably our best bet. Let's go ahead and throw it down now. Uh, opponent not doing very much, which is interesting. Uh, we could have, I guess, done two things there. We could have also played the other Hollowed Haunting. We'll see. That would have been a much, a much cleaner play, to be honest, because we really didn't do anything with the uh, Sanctum Weaver, so that was a bit of a mistake, but oh good. Uh, sure. Uh, we'll tap it for three white just out of that's what you're supposed to do, but we can't really do anything with it, so that's okay. Uh, the 1-1 one -one is actually gonna be a lot scarier very quickly here, I think, so I'm curious to see how this actually plays out. A Witching Well. They're playing Heartless Act as well, that's kind of interesting. Uh, Heartless Act is quite good, but I just haven't seen it in a while. Uh, alright, let's drop that Hollowed Haunting, let's see what happens. <laughs> Another Banishing Light, okay, um... Not a super exciting draw there, but uh, from here on out, we can now basically create two creatures and draw a card uh, off of any enchantment that we play. So as long as they can't deal with those, we're in okay shape. Um, very interesting. Oh, fantastic. Okay, that's about perfect. Hopefully they can't counter this. Uh, if, even if they do, we still get two creatures and draw a card. <laughs> Uh, so truthfully, it's not the end of the world if they do, but we clearly don't want them to, you know, like obviously that's not good. Um, and there's a Calyx as well. That's quite good. Uh, let's drop you for white. I'm gonna go ahead and play the Calyx here. Uh, I would like to get this going so we can return everything from the graveyard. We right now only have Sanctum Weaver, but chances are, uh, that is not gonna be the case a few turns from now. Uh, so let's go ahead, let's reveal something, let's put it into our hand. Uh, the, the selection here as well is just quite good. And there we go! That was such a quick third game, we've got the win! Ender Seas going undefeated! Let's talk about it. Alright guys, what a week this is turning out to be! Hollowed Haunting turns out is an amazing, um, amazing card and you guys are being really, really awesome in the deck building process with these amazing decks that you guys have put together. So Ender Seas, congratulations, you are also tied for the lead. Uh, our first, uh, I'm trying to look, Monday, The Last Orphan, that was who it was. The Last Orphan also got three wins on Monday. We will have a final one on Friday uh, to see if we can get one more person to join the uh, the Undefeated Club. I mean, my goodness, this is amazing. Don't forget, start deck building for next week. Splendid Reclamation is the card to build around. I wish you all the absolute best of luck. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you again very soon for the next Challenge Week video.